YouTube, Topaz Yates back for another daily review, and this one is to that Fresh Montana No Pressure featuring Future, and I'm giving this one the yellow light because it's not all that bad, like honestly you get what you expect to get out of a Fresh Montana and a Future song, like if you came here for lyricism, then you completely came to the wrong spot, but yet the focus that they have is usually on the quality production, and then on top of it makes somewhat of a catchy jam, and that's exactly the direction that they went to, but they went in that whole repetitiveness direction because they say the more and more you say something the more and more it's likely that people will remember it and that's why you're hearing no pressure so many times within that hook like they're trying to make it be so catchy by just saying it over and over and over and honestly this is somewhat comparative to the last review video that I just made with Wale and such man because the concept of it is non-existent, like ultimately they're both individually spitting, but yet here's the reason why this song is better than that one. Simply put, the production is 10,000 times better, one. You really can't come into a track like this expecting lyricism when you kinda got to go in expecting lyricism when you're dealing with Wale. And on this one, the only bit of lyricism that you get is when Fresh Montana said that he's flip-flopping like he's standing on a beach, like I see where he tried to go there with the flip-flops and standing on the beach and all. That, but yet, he put it in the wrong context, you dig? Unless I'm completely out of touch with weed smoking culture and all that, I do not believe flip flopping has anything to do with smoking weed. Because pretty much to put this in complete context, what he's ultimately talking about is smoking weed on how he smoked like a hundred thou worth of weed, and if anybody else did that, then they would OD, and that's why the chicks rock with me, and that's why he flip flopping like he's on the beach. Now, I could just be out of touch, man, but that just makes absolutely no sense, and on a lyrical prowess level in which French Montana's at, that kind of makes sense that he would make something like that, so I'm not going to read too deeply into it. But I feel as though it is worth a listen just based off of that production and the catchy factor. It's not that catchy, but yet it kind of works. But this concludes today's review, and now we're going to jump into a brief instrumental from underground producer Mo Brown before we jump into some of your questions. says that he hopes that this last Joey Badass album is going to help him get the respect that he deserves out here in the game. And you know, I hope so too, but in the end, game ain't about respect. Like, they could hate you all they want, man, as long as they paying you. And I'm hoping that's what's going to come from this the most. I'm definitely checking the billboard for this project and such. I'm hoping that he sells well enough that people are actually going to go ahead and renegotiate deals and all of that stuff and that he'll become one of those top three artists. So Mozart says that he feels as though this Tech 9 collection collaboration album that he dropped is the worst album that he's ever came out with and such and I'm not gonna go that far because even though Tech 9s name is written in bold on this joint man it's still not completely his project this was a group effort this is more the strange music collaboration than it is a Tech 9 album so with that in mind I give him somewhat of a pass here I hope you enjoyed the show you can follow me at Twitter up there and you can go to downloadpads.com that's down there to read today's article.